Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be going over the differences between an MCP and an API. So if you've been in the software development workspace for a while now, you surely have heard of MCPs and APIs. And if you're a beginner who is just now learning to code, you might have seen this term thrown around many, many times. Um, and I figured that this video would be helpful to go over the differences as well as discuss uh, the primary use cases of each and what their respective right. features are. So first I'm going to start off with the basics by going over what an API is as well as what an MCP is. So to start off, an API is an application programming interface um, and you can think of it like a waiter at a restaurant. This is a very common analogy people will use. But essentially, you're sitting at your table with the menu and you tell the waiter, I want the pasta. The waiter will go to the kitchen, get your pasta and bring it back to you. That's it. One specific request, one specific response. And in programming terms, um, you can think of it as one application saying, give me the current weather for New York. And what will happen is that a weather API will respond with the temperature, humidity, wind speed, etc. And your app will now have that data, but still needs to figure out what to do with it. All that an API does is that it fetches information that you ask for and enables you to display that information to the end user. On the other hand, model context protocols or MCPs for short are completely different. This is something that was built specifically for AI models in 2024. Instead of you being the waiter deciding what to fetch, imagine you tell an AI assistant something along the lines of going outdoors. The AI assistant has access to a toolbox. This can range from weather data, your calendar, to your location and your past preferences. And this AI assistant will look at your question, figure out which tools it needs, and call those services on its own. And then it's going to tell you something along the lines of the weather, along with what time you are free to do um, any outdoor activities, as well as nearby suggestions based on your past preferences. Essentially, you didn't tell it to check the weather, you didn't tell it to look at your calendar, the AI figured out what information it needed and went and got it. And that's how MCPs work. You give the AI access to tools through a standardized protocol and the AI decides how to use them. APIs require you to know exactly what you want and ask for it, whereas with MCPs, you're able to ask questions in plain English and the AI will produce an intelligent response that figures everything out for you. So here are the visual diagrams of how both the API and MCP work. So with an API, we have one specific request and we get one specific response. So in the earlier example, I mentioned fetching the weather data for New York. So what will happen is that our app is going to call this weather API to get the weather data. And then once it's presented with the weather data, it can essentially display this data within the application. Now with an MCP, you present it with a question. And what will happen is that the assistant is going to use the context that it has gathered along with the access to the services that it has to produce an intelligent answer. So when we ask it for suggestions on outdoor activities, it is going to reach out to any weather services that it may have access to as well as our calendar and our preferences to present us with an intelligent answer that not only addresses the initial question but also provides more information that we may find useful. So now I'm going to show you how this looks like in practice. We're gonna start with APIs because you probably already know what they do. So right here, if we go ahead and call this weather API, watch what happens. See that? We make one request and we get one response. The temperature, condition, humidity, and wind speed. This is just raw data and that's all that we will receive from an API. The API doesn't care why you want this data or what you'll do with it. It just gives you what you asked for and your application has to figure out the rest. So this is perfect for specific tasks. If you need weather data, you'd call the weather API. If you want user information, you'd call the user API. One request and one response. Now let's see MCP in action. So I'm going to ask the same question about the weather, but look at what happens differently. The AI says, I'll check the weather for you I can access weather data, your calendar, and your location preferences. And these green tags right here indicate the tools the AI accessed. It didn't just call the weather API. It also checked the calendar 
and user preferences because it understood those might be relevant. The AI made decisions about which tools to use. I didn't tell it to check my calendar. It figured that out on its own. So now let's go ahead and ask a follow-up question about whether or not I should plan outdoor activities. So I'll click it right here. And here it says, let me check your calendar and the weather forecast. You have a free afternoon and it'll be sunny at 72 degrees Fahrenheit, perfect for outdoor activities. The AI has combined weather data, my calendar availability, and my preferences to give me actual recommendation. It synthesized multiple data sources into one intelligent answer. With an API, I get raw data and I have to figure out what to do with it. With MCP, the AI does the thinking and gives me the answers. So here's what this means in code. Right here I have a traditional API call where you essentially make a fetch request, you get JSON data back, and then you write if statements to handle the logic. Here, if the temperature is above 70 degrees, then do this. You're responsible for all of the decision making. And right below it, I have the MCP implementation. So essentially, uh, you define tools for your MCP server. And these tools are the functions that the AI can call. So earlier, when we had our example uh, with the MCP, we enabled our assistant to access the get weather function to call the weather API internally, the calendar API, as well as retrieving the user's preferences, because those are all services that could be of help in producing an intelligent answer. And the magic is that you don't have to write the code telling the AI when to use each tool. The AI will read the tool descriptions and decide for itself. So when a user asks, should I plan outdoor activities, the AI automatically figures it out and it realizes that it needs to check weather, calendar, and preferences, and then it'll synthesize everything into a natural answer. You're not writing any conditional logic. You're not chaining API calls. The AI handles that orchestration entirely on its own. And you can see that reflected right here within this um, AI response. So it'll just call the large language model. Then it's going to pass in the user's query right here, along with the tools that could be relevant in answering this query. And it's going to automatically call get weather, check calendar, and get preferences to produce an intelligent response um, that would be more helpful than just having an API response. All right, that covers everything you need to know regarding APIs and MCPs to help you understand the primary differences between them along with their specific strengths. So to recap, APIs are perfect when you need specific data and know exactly what you want, while MCPs shine when you need intelligence and context. Natural language interfaces and multi-step workflows involve MCPs for an overall better user experience. And a key insight that I wanted to note is that MCPs don't replace APIs by any means. Under the hood, MCPs are still calling traditional APIs to gather responses. It's just that you now have a large language model that is able to synthesize those responses into something that we can easily interpret. Um, I apologize for not uploading as frequently as before. I've just been dealing with college applications and essays, but yeah. If this video is helpful, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. As always, have a nice day and I'll see you in the next video.